Hello YouTube, my name is Oso Guinea Pig. Welcome to episode 3 of Redstone with Oso, and let's get this shit started. So, in the last two episodes of Redstone with Oso, we talked about how redstone dust works, and how it reacts with other things and its behavior. And we also talked about redstone torches and their behavior, and how they react with other things. Well, today in episode 3 of Redstone with Oso, we're going to talk a little bit about redstone repeaters. So, how do you craft a redstone repeater? Well, to craft a redstone repeater, we're going to use three blocks of stone, and we're going to place them like this. This is smooth stone, not uh, cobblestone. We're then going to place two redstone torches right here on the left middle slot and the right middle slot. And in between those redstone torches, we're going to place a piece of redstone dust. And there we get our repeater. Now, the repeater looks like this, and it's going to face whichever direction we place it down. This being the front of the repeater, and this being the back of the repeater. So, if we place it like this, it's going to face this way. Place it like this, it's going to face this that way. Place it like this, and it's going to face that way. Now, this is what a redstone repeater looks like when it's being powered. You can see in this instance, it's being powered directly from a redstone torch. But it can also be powered from redstone dust, if it's in the powered state, like this. You can see we can remove the torch, like so, and it will become unpowered. It can also be powered from a block. You can see here that the redstone repeater is leading out of this block, and when we power that block, the redstone repeater becomes powered. It can also be powered directly from a lever or button, like so. Now, there are four main things that a redstone repeater does that are, make them very useful to any redstone user. So the first thing is that they are able to cause delays. In its current state, the redstone repeater causes a delay to any circuit it is hooked up to, to for about one-tenth of a second. Now if I right-click on the redstone repeater, this will now make the delay two-tenths of a second. If I click it again, this will now be 3 tenths of a second, and if I hit it again, now it becomes 4 tenths of a second. If I right click it at this point, it will then go back to 1 tenth of a second, so I can cycle through the options very quickly. So right here I have a setup where I have a block that I'm going to power with this button. And this redstone repeater, set at 1 tenth of a second delay, is going to affect this redstone, which is going to power the door. You can see that because it is just a 1 tenth of a second delay, it is very hard to notice. However, when I have multiple redstone repeaters linked up, and you can see these are all at full delay, which is 4 tenths of a second, it will cause a 1.6 second delay, because this is 4 redstone repeaters and 4 tenths of a second delay on each of them. You can see it is a much longer delay. Now the second useful property of redstone repeaters is that they do not uh, affect redstone around them. You can see if I place this redstone torch here, it is not going to affect this redstone dust. You can see this happening on a bigger scale here too. You see I have redstone repeaters going through here to this door. Now this is just a rough example, but let's say I just wanted to power that door, but I didn't want to affect this redstone here. Well there we go. We can just go through like that. If I had used redstone dust for this, it would have powered the door, but it would have also affected these ones around it, which I would not want it to do. If I have repeaters right next to each other, this can allow me to have inputs right next to each other, one block away, and theoretically have outputs one block away from each other. The third thing is that redstone uh, repeaters can only translate power in one direction. You see we have a repeat, a, uh, sorry, not a repeater, we have a redstone torch that is sending power into the front of the redstone repeater. Now the redstone repeater can only translate power from the back of it to the front, so it cannot, the back of this will not receive the power. If I put the redstone t torch behind the redstone repeater, it will send it to the front. The last thing about redstone repeaters that is very important and it is extremely useful is that it will revive the current of a redstone dust current. Now what does this mean? 
Well, if you watched Redstone with Oso Episode 1, you saw that redstone dust can only uh, allow a current to pass through it for 15 blocks at a time. So you can see here that I've powered this piston, even though it's winded well over 15 blocks. Now, how is this true? This is because I have a redstone repeater here. What this does is it is essentially reviving this current. You can see this is a very low current, and if I had just redstone dust here, it would not even make it to the next block. However, I have a redstone repeater here, and it is reviving this current and putting it at full strength into this next stretch of redstone dust. This can be very helpful when you are trying to send a signal a long way. However, it will create a delay once you have enough of these built up. So that has been Redstone with Oso Episode 3. Now you can uh, click the middle of your screen right now to check out the powers of blocks and charges the video that I made because that shows some other properties that Redstone repeaters create in blocks. But right now you can click in the top left hand corner right there to access my previous episode. You can click the blue box on the top right to go to my next episode of Redstone with Oso. And go ahead and click that green block in the bottom left to go to my channel so you have some of my other videos. And click the box in the bottom right to subscribe. So, hope you liked my video guys. Hope you got something out of it. My name is Oso Guinea Pig, and I'll see you guys next time.